the world. The world of God is life. A life unto my feet and a lamp unto my path. Join us as we explore the revelation of the scripture through God's servant, Prophet Gabriel Onola Po, the Apostle of Freedom of Christ the King Rescue Global Ministry. Stay blessed. Like I've been saying for the past four weeks, we serve an excellent God and it will be an aberration to live a life of mediocrity. Excellence and mediocrity do not go together. Excellence and mediocrity do not go together. I welcome you once more in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to this platform of Christ the King Rescue Global Ministry, also known as a Rescue Camp. Um, for the past four or five weeks, we have been discussing on freedom from comfortable mediocrity. Freedom from comfortable mediocrity. I made it plain and clear that greatness is ingrained in your nature. Because your God is great, your greatness can only be measured by your own mind. What do I mean? The level you can attain in life can only be determined by yourself. If you determine to be somebody, I want to tell you you have all the powers in heaven and on earth to become it. If you determine you want to be president of a nation, Given the right steps, commitment, and diligence and dedication, you can become the, a president of a nation, of that nation. God had created you for excellence. Nothing will bring him glory than your best. I made us to know what comfortable mediocrity is foundations of comfortable mediocrity I dwell so much on the causes of comfortable mediocrity last week I started treating or talking about how to obtain freedom from comfortable mediocrity and I promised us I'm going to continue from where I stopped so by the grace of God this morning, we are going to continue our discussion on freedom or how to obtain freedom from comfortable mediocrity. I'll be taking my Bible text from the book of Esther. Esther chapter 4. I'll read verses 15 through 17. The book of Esther, Queen Esther, chapter 4, from verse 15. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. Go, gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days night or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went away and carried out all of Esther's instructions. The next step you need to take or the next thing you need to know or another thing you must do if you want to be free from comfortable mediocrity is to have a purpose you are ready to live and die for if need be. Someone said, I think it's Ralph Waldo Emerson, 
He said, no man is worthy to live. If he has no purpose to live and die for, a man is not worthy to live, to be alive. If you have not discovered for yourself a purpose, you are ready to live and die for. In the passage that we read, it was a popular story for Bible students and scholars, especially Christians that are familiar with reading their Bibles. Queen Esther, God had elevated her. She's now the king, queen to the most powerful king in the world during her time. Her husband, King Ahasuerus, was ruling over 127 provinces, which today we can call 127 nations, including all of Africa, Europe, Near Asia, Middle East. All the no war there. Her husband was the king. And she was the queen. But it came to a time that a challenge arose that threatened the existence of our people, the Jews. Our foster father, who also doubled as a father, our uncle, Mordecai, went and narrated the situation to Esther. <laughs> Sometimes I used to laugh. Some people have not gotten to any level in life and you see them shutting the doors against others. I know of a lady who married to a fairly well-to-do man and uh, she announced, I don't want to see anybody around me. I don't want to see my people. I don't want them to cast me down. I don't want them to destroy my home. This is a husband who was still a, a salary earner. Only she was earning well. He was earning well. Bequesta did not build a fence around herself. Even though she had every, everything she needed, humanly speaking, she was not only comfortable, she was more than comfortable. Queen Esther chose to stick, to stick her neck out for her people. When the challenge came to either see her people destroyed, annihilated, or to serve them, even at the expense of her life, she decided, I will arise for my people to save them. I was reading in yesterday's punch, June 2nd, about a woman from Southeast Nigeria. She said, I'm going to see that my people have a seaport in the eastern part of Nigeria. I would give it all it takes. I see Esther's spirit in her. That woman, by all standards in Nigeria here, she is a comfortable woman. She has achieved at least to a level. She could live anywhere she liked. She could eat whatever she wanted. She could wear whatever she wanted to wear. She can travel to any part of the world. But yet, she, she saw the need to, to fight the cause of our people, the Igbos. If you want to break loose from the shackle of comfortable mediocrity, you must have a purpose you are ready to live and die for. Esther discovered one and she decided I will either die or achieve this purpose by making sure my people are liberated. They did the first thing, three days marathon. <laughs> she said, nobody should eat nor drink for three days and three nights. That's 72 hours. Some people today, with little comfort, has them to come and fast. I can fast. <laughs> and you want to ask them, do they have day to destiny? You want to ask them, do they have fission 
of a, a brighter tomorrow of where they are going. Queen Esther had no reason to fast. But she knew if she's to break this comfortable mediocrity and become great, she has to discipline herself. I want to tell you it is not easy to be in a palace, in a house of wealth, and observe three days marathon. Dry. No food, no water. Three days. Not because she was sick. Not because she needed a job. Not because she needed a promotion. Not because she needed a husband. Not because she needed a child. But because she wanted to see her people delivered and liberated. And you know what? The Bible told us they went ahead and did so. Three days marathon fasting. I'm asking you, my listener, when last have you fasted? When last have you observed fasting? Even the ones they dictated in your church, did you do it? You seem comfortable. That's a, a mediocre comfortability. Simply because you can afford to square meals. Maybe you have like 1 million or 10 million in your bank account. You felt you have the whole world. So fasting is for strugglers, not for people like you. <laughs> I, I, I pity you, and I also pray for you that you will not see the reason to do hard fasting. I remember in those days when we were young, they used to tell us, pray that you may not pray. Fast that you may not fast. Have a reason. If you have a dream, be ready to achieve that dream or die for that dream. Yes. Be ready to pay any price for your dream. If you want to achieve excellence and break the yoke of comfortable mediocrity. Esther liberated that people. Do you know what? It was not because Esther became a queen that she became the mother of Jewish nation today. We, was, we are celebrating Esther because of the feat she achieved for her people. The, the feat she achieved by using her office, by using her position. What are you using your position to achieve? God has elevated you. Thank God. Are you having others in mind? Or you are a person who believe now that I'm bellyful, I don't care if others are hungry. Or you are somebody like Esther who knew and acknowledged that I'm not alive if my people are not alive. The reason why Nigeria is in the state it is today is because we have politicians and leaders who believe if myself and my family are comfortable and secure, I don't care about others. If you have political leaders who believe that I am not alive, if my people are not alive, I am not free, if my people are in bondage, I am not full, if my people are hungry, I want to tell you, there will be a massive and positive turnaround in our nation, Nigeria. We need people who are ready to live and die for their purposes. If you want to be free from comfortable mediocrity, Another thing is, we'll be ready to fight off fear and take a plunge. Fight off fear and take a plunge. By taking a plunge, I mean take risk. Oh yeah. If you die in the process of the risk, so be it. If you succeed, so be it. But by every mean and by all means, take risk. Life is not for people who are cowards. Greatness, excellence, is not for chicken-hearted, lily-livered people. Excellence are for the lion-hearted. Greatness is for people who are ready to pay the price. You cannot be free from comfortable mediocrity. Some people say, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay with this. You are okay with what? You are okay with a comfortable mediocrity? You want to wonder 
why somebody like Dangote, how some people don't pronounce that name well. Some people say Dangote, Dangote. That's not the right pronunciation. The right pronunciation is Dangote. I got to know this in 2003 when I was at Motion Center in the Marina for the book launch of uh, Chief Olufalai. And uh, when Dangote came in, I was to be introduced. Chief Solomon La, now the late, former PDP chairman, stood up and said, let me introduce my boy and brother from the north. He said some people wrongly call him Dangote, Dangote. Dangote. He said no. He said the right position is Dangote. And the man said, thank you, sir. You are correct. <laughs> So since that time, I knew the right person is Dangote. Where am I going? Why is somebody like Dangote being the richest black man in the world today start, still starts doing other businesses? As we are talking now, he's building one of the biggest refineries in the world. Number one, the biggest in Africa. Number two, the biggest in no, no, no refinery in Europe. Is as big as the refinery is building in Nigeria. He has rice farm. Just two, two years ago, he just acquired another place for tomato plantation. You, you want to wonder somebody that we go into tomato plantation? He, he, he was taking risk. He knew he cannot rest on his horse. He has to do more. Do you want to be free from comforting mediocrity? Take risk. Fight off fear. If you fail, thank God. If you succeed, you'll be celebrated. The biggest or the largest retail company in the world today, Walmart, funded by Sam Walton, went bankrupt twice. You know the meaning of bankruptcy? Bankruptcy is not going to death. No, it's far worse than that. Bankruptcy is when you started a business, the business collapsed, then if they value all your assets, and they sell them, and the asset cannot offset the debts, the liability you have said to be in bankruptcy. So, Sam Walton was bankrupted twice. So, he closed down the shop, declared bankruptcy, he started again, closed it down, declared bankruptcy, he started the third time. When the journalist went and interviewed him, Sam Walton, what can you say? about your business that is going bankrupt all the time. He said, I've just learned twice how business should not be run. And he went ahead and built the largest retail outfit anywhere in the world. Today, uh, Walmart is in 138 countries of the world, having about $42 billion every month. Greatness and excellence is for risk takers. Be ready to take risk. You want to be free from comfortable mediocrity? Relish on your past successes, no matter how insignificant. You know what I mean by relish? Enjoy it. Give yourself a pat at the back. If nobody says well done, say well done to yourself. There is this Agama lizard. You people used to say, you know Agama lizard likes to jump from two-story building. From one story building, from a very tall tree, after jumping and falling on the ground, bah! as if it's going to die, after about 10 seconds, it will lift up his head and it will do like, it will nod it. You say, at least, if nobody greets me, I greet myself. <laughs> Thank God for the little achievement you have been able to, to make. Thank God you have been able to come this far. You are a student. You have been able to pass through nursing primary school. You are not in secondary school. Thank God for it. Thank God for the for at least you graduated from primary school. You are a university student. Thank God that you have been able to graduate from primary nursery school and from the secondary school. And now you are in the university. God that saw you to that level is going to see you through. Relish past successes. You know, why do you need to, to release and to enjoy past successes? Is to release positive adrenaline. That's what you call an adrenaline. It's a chemical in your body that makes you enthusiastic, 
that makes you excited, that makes you joyous and happy. You see, if all the time you are thinking about all your failures, you are thinking about all your lack, you are thinking about all those things you don't have, you will be becoming demoralized, depressed, and dejected. But when you, when you wake up in the morning and say, God, I thank you for taking me this far. I know you can take me farther. I have this. I have this. You have been able to do this for me. You have been able to do this for me. You will be releasing into your memory, into your mind, an adrenaline that will energize you, that will empower you, that will propel you, that will push you to do more and do better. That is why Parents and guidance should always encourage their children with positive words. If your child pass an exam very well, it, it, there, there is, it is not a point to say, let me kill chicken for you. Or if you can't kill a chicken, say, let me buy you a kilo of chicken. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate your, 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 your success in this examination. Oh, you make me proud. You pass this school sat at a sitting. We need to celebrate it. And before you know it, that child, the adrenaline will be released into our brain or his brain. I say, yeah, if my parents celebrate me for passing school sat, what if I pass my professional exam? Celebrate your past successes. It is not all about woeful story. God has been good to you. Oh yeah, God has been good to you. You have come this far. It will take you further. You want to break loose from comfortable mediocrity, shun shortcut mentality. Shun, run away from shortcut mentality. Many are failures today. Many are unable to reach their goals today because of shortcut mentality. Shortcut mentality. You see them looking for an easy way out to achieve their goal. That is why you see young boys in today's Nigeria going into Yahoo Yahoo. They believe they need quick money. Not knowing it will end up destroying their character and destroying their destiny. Of course, I am surprised that ladies are going to Yahoo Yahoo again today. It's not only boys. About uh, two weeks ago, somebody called my wife, purported from a bank, and said, your BVN had an issue. <laughs> you want to register, somebody want to register an account using your BVN. And we needed to contact you for certain information. And my wife said, from which bank? She said, from Union Bank. <laughs> So mommy called the phone, came to me and asked one or two questions. She called her back. And before you know it, we got to know she's a 419. A Yahoo Yahoo girl. So it's no longer Yahoo Yahoo boys. We now have Yahoo Yahoo girls. You know what? They will end up destroying their destinies. Short cut. Always end up becoming long cut. You know what? You know why? If they are being caught they will be jailed pending like seven years of their life if not more in the prison yard and before they come out of prison yard their mates that they were in secondary school together have gone further finish his university education possibly finish his master degree and working and they will come out as an ex confit thinking of where to start his or life from may end up committing suicide or becoming a hardened criminal. Do not take a shortcut. About five years ago, I read how a private university in Nigeria expelled five students from their school. Why? Because they cheat in the examination hall. Many people were, you know, it's normal for different reactions. Some people are saying that their discipline is too harsh. They shouldn't have expelled them. Ordinary one would have been okay. I said, no. They are building characters into them. It's not only about academic qualification, but noble character 
that will define their future and define the future of a nation. So, you know what happened? From 500 level being expelled, <laughs> they start again. That is, if such minds, such guys are ready to be graduates, they will go and start from another 100 level in another school. They have lost for years. Shortcut has turned out to be long cut. Sean shortcut mentality. If you want to break loose from comfortable mediocrity, pay the price. Read your book. Do the hard work. It's going to pay off. People who thought they're smart, who can beat the system, may be looking at you as a fool today. Don't mind them. Tomorrow, you'll be proved right. They'll be proved wrong. You want to be free from comfortable mediocrity? Spend more time on yourself, on your goals, and on your projects. Do you know the reason why it appears you cannot achieve that goal? is because you are too much in a hurry. You are too much in a hurry. If you can give it the right attention, an adequate time, you will see that you will know that same thing. I've told you about Archimedes, a Grecian mathematician, an architect, an engineer. He was working on a solution for more than 18 years. He couldn't get a solution. Then one day, as he was taking his bath, he was in the bathroom when he, he had insights. Idea came to him on how he can solve the problem. The history tells us Archimedes ran out of his bedroom naked. And was say, Eureka, 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 Eureka. Eureka in the Greek means, I have found it. I have found it. I have found it. I have found it. It was this same Archimedes who said, give me the liver and I will move the world. Give me what? The liver. Lia, liver, that's Gia. Give me the liver and I will move the world. If you sit on that same problem or project or goal for a number of years, you will achieve it. Do you know how many years it took Nelson Mandela to liberate his people? He has to spend 27 years in the prison. 27 years. They, they gave him so many options. Drop this agitation. I will set you free. He said, no. Forgo this project of ending apartheid in South Africa. And you'll be a free man. He said, no. Okay. Are you ready to relocate to another country? We, we, you leave this nation for us. He said no. And he achieved freedom for his people. After 27 years in the prison. If you spend enough time, you achieve your goal. The next thing is you must be ready to choose excellence over mediocrity. And how do you choose excellence over mediocrity? Never, never be content, contented with average. Develop a culture of excellence. So if excellence is not rewarded today where you are, excellence is going to be rewarded tomorrow wherever you find yourself. Another thing you need to know, if you want to be free from comfortable mediocrity, strive to be a first class, a world rated performer in whatever you choose to do. A friend of mine told me by a pastor or a prophet in Nigeria who was invited to the seat of power several years back. And when he got to the presence of the president, he lost his composure. When he came back, he told our friend, All right, when I got there, I don't know what to say again. <laughs> you know what? He never prepared for the opportunity that came his way. Somebody said, you get your tools ready. 
and God will get plenty of job for you to do. I think that's De Kanegi, the author of How to Win Friends and Influence People, and also author of How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. You get your tools ready and God will get a plenty of jobs for you to do. Strike to be first class. Warrated. I used to ask my pastors in our church if tomorrow providence smile on you and Queen Elizabeth of England Send for you, or the president of the United States of America send for you and say, I want to spend 15 minutes with my cabinet. Just address us for 15 minutes and pray for us. Do you have what to deliver? Or you just get there and be blabbing. And the president will say, Oh no, I regret bringing this man here to disgrace me. If you don't be a disgrace to yourself and to people whose interests you are representing, try to be the best and the first class. Be a finisher. Stop doing things halfway. Is there something you have laid your hand on? Please, never stop halfway. Be a finisher. Work on it. Stay on it. Labor at it. When you stop halfway, you are denying yourself the, 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 the joy of seeing your pursuit, your goal being pursued to the end. Demand the best of yourself. If no one else does. You need to come to my house. And see my children. Cleaning chairs. <laughs> you, will be, you will be surprised. Years back. More than 10 years ago. I called my two boys. The twins. Say anything you want to do. Be good at it. Excellently. I took a duster. I said, let me give you an example. You want to clean this chair. I did it for them. I practice it. You clean the legs. You clean the seat. You clean the, the, the arms. You clean, you, you clean the, 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 the backrest. There was a day, two of our members visited our house and one of the boys was called to clean the chairs. And the boy was saying, Oti to, this is enough, this is enough. I said, no, Koto, no, it's not enough, sir. Allow him to do it well. You are a girl. You are asked to come and wash dishes in the kitchen. Don't wash it after sadly. Wash it, rinse it, you know, you want to wonder sometimes you want you, you are served with a plate and you see soap at the side of that plate. Such a girl is a failure. Or whoever that washed such a plate, he has not demanded the best of him or herself. Whatever you are, you lay your hand to do in life. Demand the best of yourself. Do it to a level people will say, Haba, if I want to preach a 30 minute message, I will prepare for it for more than 30 hours. Over 30 hours message. Over, over 30, uh, yeah, 30 minutes message, I will commit over 30 hours preparation into it. I want to research what does Bible have to say about this topic. What have other great preachers and other great men said about this topic? I will read my Bible. I will consult books. 
I don't just want to go to the altar and open my mouth and begin to 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 to, to, to say heresies. People who came, they believe they will receive. That's why they come. And you must not waste their time. You must not let them regret ever coming to listen to you talk. You have to wow them. Though you need the help of the Holy Spirit, but there's also a place of preparation. It is when you are prepared that the Holy Spirit will help you. It's beyond prayer. To the glory of God, in year 2005, I was invited to a conference in Portacot, River State, Nigeria. They call it Prophetic Conference and Convention. 21 prophets were invited from all over the world for the program. From US, from Island of Solomon, from Ghana, from UK, in Lagos, in Nibadan, in Uyo, in Portacourt, from Abuja. It was a three days convention, prophetic convention. All the great, all the men of God that came there were great. And to the glory of God, they all performed well. But at the end of the third day, the convener said, I'm sorry, I want to ask one question. All these 21 prophets did very well. They said yes. But if you are to pick the best among these 21, who will you pick? They all said, that man from Lagos. He said, no, we have three men from Lagos. Which one? They said, that one, Gabriel, Gabriel, Gabriel. Prophet Gabriel. He said, that's my choice. He said, why? He said, some of these ministers, some are good in music. They are not good in words. They are not good in prayers. Some are good in giving prophecy, accurate prophecy. They are not good in prayers. They are not good in music. Some are good in music. They are not good in word. They are not good in prayer. He said, but this man, Prophet Gabriel, is balanced. In music, in prayer, in word. He said he delivered a balanced message. And you know what? I only spent two hours. Each one of us two, two hours. Demand the best of yourself. If nobody demand the best of you, place a demand on you. I, on the lap of Gabriel, chose that I will be the best in my field. Are you a teacher? Be the best teacher. Are you an accountant? Be the best accountant. Are you a banker? Be a, the best banker. Are you a politician? Be the best politician. Bishop Odeko said, you make the green grass and sheep will come grazing. You want to be free from comfortable mediocrity? Be daring in your tents. Take the limits of yourself and of God. I like the book of Ephesians. I like it. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. God is able to do immeasurably. Let me read the KJV fashion. I like the way King James Fashion rend it, rends it, put it. Ephesians chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 3, and verse 20. Now, unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above. <laughs> Look at those three adjectives. It is an uncommon passage. You hardly see such passage in any book, either Bible or whatever book. Exceeding is an adjective. Abundantly is an adjective. Above is an adjective. Three adjectives 
in one verse. <laughs> now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Take the limit of yourself and of your God. Somebody was presented before a powerful king in history. And the king asked him, what do you want? And he said, well, I'm a, your humble servant. <laughs> Foolishness, not humility. And I'm a humble servant. If only I can be given my family land. And the king said, is that all you wanted? He said, yes. He said, granted. What if you had asked the king, give me a city? That same day, you will become a city owner. There was a story of a recruit who became a general in one day in Roman in Roman army. Roman army used to be one of the most powerful armies in the world. And that recruit, I want to tell you the power that you have, if you can request, has big, because your God is big. These recruits, after they have trained them, their commanders have told them, today, the emperor will be coming to examine all of you to see if you have taken to all the trainings given. When the emperor is parading, you must not look left, right. You must not look back. You must remain straight. No matter what. Say yes, sir. You have me? Say yes, sir. You have me? Say yes, sir. <laughs> you know, Fella called them Sombi <laughs> because they must obey. Obey the last order. So the day of inspection came and the emperor regaling in his robe and majesty was mounted on a horse and the horse was parading. The emperor was parading examining these recruits. But it got to a level when the emperor got to the back of this particular recruit, he had a rumbling. There was a rumbling, there was a noise. He was telling a fellow recruit, I will look back. The other one said, don't look back. He said, I will look back. They say, don't look back. He said, I will look back. He said, I don't look back. He said, I will look back. He looked back. He saw that the, the, the bridle of the horse had fell off from the king's hand, from the emperor's hand. And the emperor will have fallen off the horse, possibly die or got injured. So the recruit took the robe, the bridle, and handed it back to the emperor and maintained his position. And the emperor said, the general. And the parade handed. So they went to the dressing room where they get the uniform for their ranks. And when they got to the dressing room, they gave him the, the, the uniform of a recruit. And he told the commander, no, you give me the, the clothes of a general. He said, how do you mean? Are you mad? Are you out of your mind? You are a recruit for Christ's sake. And you want to collect a, a uniform of the rank of a general? He said, sir, didn't you hear the other time when the emperor called me the general? He said no. So it became an argument. And they have to take the matter to the emperor. When they got to the emperor, they narrated the story. And the emperor said, yes. I call him general. And since the word has come out of my mouth, go and make him general. <laughs> so in the history of army, a Roman army, we have a recruit who became a general in one day. 
Why? Because he thought big, he acted big, and he asked big. Take limit of God. Don't say you are comfortable with who you are. Don't be comfortable with what you have. Go. Aya. Soa. Aya. Be like Igu. Dear the space. Dear the heights. You are not going to crash. You are not going to collapse. But rather, you are going to go up. Our God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you think of us according to the power that worketh in us. By the grace of God, I'll be stopping here today. Next week, I'm going to treat consequences of living a comfortable, mediocre life. Consequences of living a comfortable, mediocre life. I will also give you some examples of people who got freedom from comfortable mediocrity, if time permits me next week or upper week, we'll be talking on the result of getting freedom from comfortable mediocrity. May the Lord bless his world. I want you to pray and say, God, from today, I choose to be the best in my field, in my career, in whatever I do, if I watch clothes, I wash my clothes and be the best washerman in town. If I'm a driver, I will drive and be the best driver in town. If I'm an engineer, I will walk and be the best engineer in town. Lord, from today, I choose to be excellent. I choose to be best. I decree you spirit of mediocrity. Get out of me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pray, pray, pray. Spirit of mediocrity. Spirit of mediocrity. Get out of my life. I will not be a mediocre. I'm not a mediocre. My God is not a mediocre God. I serve an excellent God. I serve a great God. I'm going to be excellent. I am going to be great. I will achieve greater height in life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone hearing my voice this morning. The spirit of mediocrity be sent out of their life in the name of Jesus. You will give every one of us the grace and the power to, uh, to strive for and to achieve greatness Amen. in whatever chosen career Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. You'll be a source of pride Amen. to your family, Amen. to your church, Amen. to your generation, Amen. to your nation, Amen. and to the world Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Through you, glory will be brought to your family. Amen. Go and achieve excellence. Amen. No more mediocrity. Amen. No more failure. Amen. There is no more a life of average. Amen. It is well with your soul. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. 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 In Jesus this program is coming to you from Platon McCrae, the King Rescue Global Ministries, known as Rescue Camp, situated in Okearogo State, Nigeria. A border town between Lagos and Ogo State. We are on a social we are on social media platform on YouTube. It is CK Reglo Freedom TV. CK Reglo on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. It is CK Reglo One. We are also on Mix LR online radio platform, which is. Mix LR slash CK Reglum. Until I see you next time, I say remain blessed. Amen. God bless you. We believe you have been blessed by this ministration. For additional information, you can visit us on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash CK Reglum 1. Also on Twitter 
at www.twitter.com slash ckreglum1. You can also download this message on YouTube at youtube.com slash ckreglum. Christ the King Rescue Global Ministry, proclaiming freedom through the gospel of Christ.